November 11, 2013. This is Sechi AI HI1, guys, and Comet Inky is starting to come in. It's just at the tip of this orange arrow, and you can back this up and play it a few times. And I'll put a link to the Sechi sites, but if you look at the JPL and you compare all the objects between the two, you can see Earth and Mercury very close to the sun, just as in the uh, stereo A image and inky to the top left now you'll, you can watch this a couple of times but what you'll see is it's moving against the grain in other words it has not quite reached the point of its perihelium it has it's coming in from the back left it's about to turn and come back in it should become clear now it may go out of this camera range for a few days and i'll show you on the jpl model what i'm talking about but guys, what, look how fast Mercury appears to come in at Earth. It is moving much faster, but the angle of the satellite is also turning right. And, but that's, that's what it looks like from Stereo 8. Now, <clears throat> when you look at HI2, the red dot will show you the path of I Sun through this month. And it is there. If you look at the star cluster under the orange arrow, there's a clear spot. Now, you may have to... Go to Sechi, and I'll put a link to it. It's kind of difficult to navigate, but I'll put a link to it, and you can go there, and if you watch it, you will see iSun come through there, and it's kind of large, and it's moving fast. Again, I think it's a few days off, and I'm going to show you why, but there's two stars below this main star cluster. iSun is going to travel down that orange arrow path and under those stars. It's hard to see, and I realize it on this video. That's why you may have to do it now. I'm, I've watched it so long I can see it. But let's go back to Inky for a moment. Notice in the blue line, it's coming down and curving. Earth and Mercury is close to the sun, just like they are in the other. But as Inky comes in, it may come out of our image for a day or two. Then it's going to come back in. You see that? As it gets ready to dive below the ecliptic. It's going to be diving below the ecliptic. Eye sun's going to be below the ecliptic. And Lovejoy is going to be below the ecliptic all at the same time. Should be quite a show. Take a look at this. But that's what we're seeing on, that's the first time I've noticed it on that camera, guys. So that's two that we're getting on on our stereo system. Now on iSun, what Bruce Gary out in uh, Arizona is talking about, that now it's magnif getting 15% brighter each day. You can pause this and read it. It goes through the V mags and stuff, but 15% brighter, and that's what they were looking for in the beginning. Then a lot of folks started saying, well, it's not going to brighten or whatever, but now that it's getting close and moving fast, it is 15% a day. 10 days, that's 150%, guys. On the 20th, they're talking about it may become visible to the eye. Now, you'll have to look at Stellarium to see if it's not uh, too far south of the ecliptic to see in the, uh, from the continental United States or anywhere in the northern hemisphere. But a couple of videos back, uh, you'll see where to put in your location on Stellarium. Look at what time you can see Ison. Now, what I'm noticing here is just what they're talking about. The coma is getting brighter and brighter, guys. That's what we're looking at on this. Now, that that's bright now that's this is a beautiful object to me to look at it we're looking at it very close to natural colors with that green glow in the front and uh, again i think uh, we may get one measurement on the tail from mr gary but some of them are saying it's outside of their range but again it's a beautiful comment we're going to be watching it now i want to show you something that's peculiar to me and this is why i think we're off a few days and i don't know if they're trying to compensate on the model or whatever but as we look at it i'm going to kind of superimpose stereo a and b's location on this in the two squares there they're in earth's orbit if you notice that pattern stereo b is behind earth following it a is in front of it and that's why we're seeing I sun coming to the into the left of A. Now here's where the math does not make sense to me. <clears throat> Today's the 11th, and I want to show you something. The distance from I sun to the sun. Let's look at this. 63 million miles. You may have to look at this in large screen, or you can. I'll link this uh, model also, guys. Now 63 million miles. Let's go to the 13th. 
60 million miles. It's saying 3 million miles. I think it's about 3.5 right now. Now there's 58. That's 2 million miles. You notice that? There's 55. There's 3 million that day. Now, the only thing that I can see that's about to slow it could possibly be affecting it was that close approach to Mercury. But two days in that period, it goes from before it speeds up to 4 million miles a day, it has dropped to, from 3 to 2 million miles. Now, I don't know if it's a compensation in their math or we're going to see ice on a couple of days early. But here we're at 7 million miles a day as it loops around. Now this is showing the 29th, as you notice, and the, the uh, swing back around if it holds together. But again, if you'll go through this, you'll notice two days between now and that point that it goes from 3 million to 2 million miles a day. So again, don't know why that compensation. Now I do realize that on some of the models you saw as it got close to the sun, the planet's slow. And the only reason that is, is they're, comp they're compensating for the speed of ice on is it just on the model as it speeds up and comes around the sun there, guys, so that it maintains its speed because it would move so fast they could hardly put it into the model. But again, there are days there of, of a million miles a day that it's saying it's slowing. So not sure what we're looking at. So heads up on that, guys. I've got what I consider to be one of the more important videos that I've ever done that I'm working on and I'm going to get it up tomorrow. It's got to do with the solar flares, it's got to do with the chemtrails, and it's got to do with your DNA. Heads up, be safe.